about learning how to devote ourselves fully into God and to give to God ourselves in our minds, in our spirits, and in our bodies. And that is an act of worship, Paul reminds us of, an act of worship which then is reflective of our entire lives and of all we do. For our children learn how to then move from our own little space in this world, our own little selves, into a community because that's what worship does for us. Worship helps us to be part of a whole community of believers, of a whole community we call the kingdom of God. And it connects us together as it connects us with God himself. And so Paul proclaims this in that Romans in the 12th chapter. And as the children on Wednesday evenings are learning about these Bible passages, they are learning and experiencing the heart of community, caring for one another, being together, playing with one another, and learning the scriptures, all fully devoting themselves to God as like an act of worship. For that's what we hear in this passage, what worship is all about. That worship is this act of sacrifice where we give ourselves and devote ourselves as a way of giving up into another. That's the act of worship for us. But this is a challenge for us to do because we have to make a shift in our ways of thinking. We have to make a shift in our own spirits in order to bring ourselves into the fullness of what worship is as Paul teaches us in Romans. And that's what Pioneer Club helps the children to do, is to shift in that spirit out of just an individual self for we want, we want, we want, and we need, we need, or mine, 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 into us and into ours and into sharing and into giving so another has out of ourselves. That's a challenge for us to learn at any age, very much as we're young when the world kind of revolves around ourselves. So it's a growing process. It's something that our children and that all of us grow into as we're maturing, into this way of being a community, a part of the very body of God in Christ Jesus. But you know, do you know that, that, that movie, children, have you seen that movie, Finding Nemo? Isn't, do you know that movie, Nemo? In that, is the Nemo like a fish, right? And his friends and all of his friends who are there helping Nemo out along the way on his journey and everything. Well, there's this part of Nemo that there are these, there, there are these um, seagulls. Do you know, remember the seagulls in Nemo? Do you remember that? The seagulls in Nemo are these seagulls who have to learn this thing because everything in their lives is just focused upon what they want. Need, 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 gimme, give gimme, give gimme. Give and everything, they're, they're just after that one thing that they want always. And they have this call and you can hear it from the seagulls. Now when you listen to seagulls, anywhere you are, you can hear that call that seagulls give everywhere. It's the call that's mine, mine, mine. That's all that they say because that's all that they know. It's what they're after and what they want. They just go after that. Well, what we learn about who God wants us to be, and as we are disciples of Jesus, is that the world and life is a lot more than just mine, mine, mine. It's something we have to grow into and mature beyond, is when we experience that it's all of us together, this community. So downstairs on Wednesday night, we call it the club. You're a part of a club, a community of others who care for you and who, who, who help you out, and you learn together and you grow together. Now that's the church. And that's what our children are experiencing on a Wednesday evening, is being the church, the followers of Christ. How Paul explains it is in worship, how we fully devote ourselves into God becomes an act of worship then. And that word worship, the way Paul uses it in Romans in that 12th chapter, that word worship is, is about labor. It has its root there, the labors that we give. So it began in, when a worker went to work, you gave all of your strength, everything you have, your whole muscle, into doing the work. Somebody hires you into a job, and you go to the job, and you give it all of your muscle, all of your strength. Well, Paul took a turn of it then and helps us to see that that work that we do becomes a worship that who we are. Because God calls us to bring our whole strength into loving God. Do you remember what Jesus taught? That greatest of the commandments is to love the Lord your God with all of your strength, with all of your might, with your whole self. That's the greatest of commandment. And then we love one another. We love our neighbor as ourselves. We love. And that's the whole community there. So this way of worshiping, it's worship, it's work. It all comes together so that any act that we have, when we fully devote ourselves to loving God in it, becomes an act of worship. 
So Paul would say, even when you go to work at the office, at the factory, at the school, when you're a student and you're playing or you're studying, you fully focus and you give your whole self there, but do it in a way that honors God. Do it in a way that you're giving your whole self in a way that then you're devoting into being a disciple of Jesus in that action. Therefore, work becomes an act of worship. When all that we do is where Paul calls us, all that we do becomes that devotion to our God. So it isn't just when we gather on a Sunday mornings that we're worshiping. Paul would say, it's whatever you're doing as a disciple of Christ, which ought to be everything we're doing, wherever we are, whenever it is, that it becomes an act of worship. He wanted to transform every action that all of us have into that, so our word for this week, as we are going through the season of Easter and focusing upon the cornerstones of the faith, is called sacrifice. And sacrifice is that very act of worship. It's how sacrifice and offering and worship all are a part of one another. And to understand any one, you understand the others and you get it all the more. Because an offering that we give, which sometimes we only say and think of it as the time when we pass the plates among ourselves and we put an offering in, which we will be doing this morning, is a time that we fully devote ourselves to God and we are reminding ourselves that everything I have is a gift from God. My body, the money in the pocket, the house, the car, the toys that we have. It's all God's. So I now want to see how does God want me to use it. That's an offering to God. And everything we do and give then and use in that way becomes like a sacrifice. It's no longer mine, 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 but it's God's, God's, God's. And our response becomes thank you, thank you, thank you, God. Thank you. There's this other word that Paul uses in that which is called transformation in that section of Romans. It's called transformation, and it's a way in which something is changed in its inward being and then transformed from its very heart, from its very center. Now, think about it like this, I think, is that it's like what you may learn in school and have even in school. You know that about a caterpillar? Have you seen that happen with a caterpillar? Makes a cocoon and a chrysalis and, gets, and, and forms it around itself. And then in a miraculous, wondrous way, what does the caterpillar become? What do you remember? Yes? A butterfly. A beautiful butterfly. Because that caterpillar surrenders itself, sacrifices itself into a marvelous transformation that happens there. That's what takes place as we do so in Christ. We surrender our lives and sacrifice and give ourselves into Christ. He transforms us into beauty, like a butterfly is transformed. Or like you take a seed and you surrender it into the earth, into the ground, and it goes into the ground and it transforms and becomes a beautiful plant, a flower, a vegetable, whatever God may have designed it to be. So it is with us. And that's an act of worship. All of that. An act of worship is when we surrender ourselves into God and devote ourselves fully. Love the Lord your God with your whole being, your strength of your body, your might, with the strength of your spirit, with all of your action and everything you're doing, and then it becomes all that we are is like a time and a life of worship. And when that is so, life happens, like with the caterpillar coming to be the butterfly like with Jesus surrendering his life into God's hands, resurrection happens and life is lifted up. That is the gift that we have and that is what takes place in our lives as we continue to seek to be his disciples, as we continue to seek to grow into Christ again and again. He takes us and makes us into new beings. And all that we wanna do then is pass it along is pass it on so that others will know this gift, is letting others know and inviting friends to Pioneer Club and saying, hey, buddy, 
next year you come with me on Wednesday nights to Pioneer Club or on Sunday mornings to Sunday school. Hey friend, I have a church that I belong to and I'm a part of and I'm finding it to be where there's much joy and there's much ways that we're growing together and life is good. Come and be with me. We just want to pass it along and give it to others so that they too grow. Here's a song that maybe reminds you of years on back when you too sang, whether it be at a campfire or whether it be at a time in Sunday school, it's a time where our children continue to enjoy a song about passing it on. We sing it together. <laughs> 